2011. One year before the end of the world, at least before we go into the great beyond, we would be blessed with many notable video game releases. Call of Duty was still in great form when Modern Warfare 3, Rockstar still releases something other than GTA and Red Dead Redemption, Valve still makes games, Todd Howard is considered as one of the best game developers, and the world would bear witness to the rise of, uh... Chosen Undead. But wait, there's more. The year would also be stacked with a plethora of racing games with the peak of Forza Motorsports, Black Box dropping their final banger before setting off into the sunset, Dirt getting taken over by Ken Block, the legend himself, and the return of a fan favorite tropical cruiser. Five years after the first game, Test Drive Unlimited makes a daring return. Still in the hands of Eden Games and still with Atari as publisher, just like last time they would take the series further with a ton of new additions to the series, as the developers would have much bigger ambitions with TDU2. Further revolutionizing the open world racing genre once more. From its immersive gameplay to the breathtaking locations, TDU2 takes us for an unforgettable ride. But to understand what needed to be added into the game, they would take a look at TDU1 and how it's still manages to maintain a large community four years after the game launched. How a game without any significant or major content update still manages to achieve the number of players as it did and from this they would decide to expand further into the social features, making the world feel more alive for the online community. Hence why a lot of social spaces have been tremendously improved with the way lobbies and housing functions alongside the casino island, a whole new area dedicated solely for, well, uh, gambling but also a social space with its own economy separate from the rest of the game. In fact, the social aspect isn't the only thing they would further improve upon, with a whole new story campaign for single player, providing a more focused and linear campaign progression with even more characters to get to know and race against throughout the campaign. A whole new island based on the glamorous high life of supercars and clubs, Ibiza, and along with it a new day and night cycle, allowing us to see the beautiful islands lit up during nighttime. An overhaul to the existing car tier system, with new license tests to complement the overhaul, and a completely new off-road racing mechanic. Oh, and complimentary photo too for your licenses. Too bad the camera broke during my gameplay. There's also the car wash. Oh yeah, the car wash. And the most important bit to any game ever made in the history of video games. Jiggle physics. However, our cruise to Ibiza won't exactly be smooth sailing. On launch, Test Drive Unlimited 2 would receive mixed reception from both the loyal fanbase and critics alike, citing the many issues within the game on launch and the questionable physics. No, not the jiggle physics, the car physics. We'll get to that in a moment. After five years, TDU2 would sell around 1.8 million copies worldwide, a very respectable number, but there are questionable things that Atari did to push that number. I mentioned in my previous video that TDU1 servers were shut down exactly one year after TDU2's release, most likely likely in an attempt to force TD1 players to move to the new game instead. And then there's the thing with Atari Token for purchasing DLCs, with many citing how these DLCs are way too overpriced and the token system overcomplicating the process. Server issues that take almost an entire year to fix on certain platforms, which is not exactly something you'd want in a game where the majority of its content is in the multiplayer section. So yeah, the game certainly didn't have a smooth launch, but there's a reason why I decided to mention these issues first before going deeper into the game, mainly because most of these issues are mostly gone, except the physics, which again, I'll get to in a bit. Now sadly, just like its predecessor, TDU2 servers have been shut down back in 2018, meaning many of the multiplayer features have been inaccessible, including the casino islands. And this is the part where I talk about the lovely Project Paradise 2. So Project Paradise 2, a mod made by the dedicated fans of the game with the goal to restore online functions, granted there are some quirks here and there, but attempting to restore something like this is no small feat. As what I've just described suggested, this mod restores features such as the community racing centers, clubs or crews, friends, leaderboards, and of course the most important one, the casino islands. Because the game has been delisted from stores, Project Paradise for TDU2 can be run on definitely legal copies of the game. But if you do own a copy of the game on Steam, it should be all fine. Speaking of which, I would recommend you check out their Discord server if you are interested in restoring TDU2 to its former glory, and perhaps make some friends in the community as well. 
Link should be in the description below. But for now, I'll be focusing on what the game has to offer for its single player content. Don't worry, we'll talk more about the multiplayer stuff in detail later. So we arrive at our new tropical paradise, Ibiza, an island of glamour and riches. And what better way is there to point home at how glamorous our lifestyle is with a pool party for our brand new character selection screen. We get to pick one out of six party goers. For this run though, I will be choosing Miss Agatha Baker from GT Online. Ah, uh, shut up, Agatha. Shut up. And surprise, it's your birthday. Turns out your friend has prepared a gift for you in the shape of a Ferrari California before urging you to try the car out as she hands you the keys and forces you to sit down and drive into the sunset. Man, what a prologue. I get that this is the island of glamour, but dang, this is pretty great. We get to start off with a darn fast and luxurious car. Quite a step up from TD1 collection of shit boxes. I mean, surely nothing can go wrong here, but anyways, don't you think the sun is too bright? Like, have you ever directly stared at the sun? I know people nowadays like to praise the sun and all that, but do they even realize the sun is just a big fiery laser beam? <laughs> Hey you, you're finally awake? Trying to be a street racer, eh? Probably think that Ferrari was legit, don't you? Well, you're in luck because you're getting that chance now. This is Tess Wintry, a bit... Uh, I mean your current employer, a future rival, and now your key into joining the Solar Crown. A group of super rich and prestigious millionaires with street racing as their hobby and passion. Tess requires you to drive her to a location where the Solar Crown competition will be broadcasted all around the world and if you make it, you're going to get a seat into the competition to finally fulfill your dream of driving fast cars and owning luxurious houses. I think it's very apparent from this point, but TDU2's main campaign takes front and center stage. A very different approach to TDU1's full freedom and minimal story. Throughout the campaign, we get to interact with the other competitors, learn of their characteristics, the relationships with the other contestants. My experience, wisdom, and precision are more than enough to handle a track full of spoiled children who can only consider themselves racers because their daddies bought them a fast car when they were 16. <laughs> and even get the chance to nab their car. No matter how repulsive they are, yes, I'm looking at you, Miami, and your pink Mustang. But ultimately, the story is just something serviceable to justify the gameplay. It does have the effect of making the game's progression into a linear one, since progressing requires specific championships the game directs you to. But that's basically the gist of the story. You start off from the bottom as a poor valet, and you rise up through the Solar Crown competition, earning millions in the process, and you can finally tell people the color of your Bugatti. But let's step back a bit. Right after the cutscene confirming you as a contestant of the Solar Crown competition, you're now taken to pick your first car and see your first home. The cars in question are C4 class, being the Lotus e Sprit, Lancia Delta, and a Ford Mustang Fastback. If you play TD1, you're probably wondering, hey, what's a C4 class? Isn't it G to A class? Well, this is one of the overhauls for TDU2. Vehicle classes are now separated by A for modern asphalt, B for off-road, and C for classics, and also M for motorbikes. Each tier are separated again by the numbers next to the letters, indicating the performance of the cars with 1 as the fastest and 7 as the slowest. You start off with no license, but during the tutorial, you are directed to get your first C license, which introduces us to short but sweet license tests. They're not as in-depth as something like Gran Turismo, but they are enough to teach you about each licenses, the type of cars you'll be using in each category, and getting to know the off-road mechanic for category B. Now, we don't have the luxury of the Platinum mod from TDU1, so here we only have 176 vehicles featuring 27 different car manufacturers and for motorbikes. This includes DLC vehicles as well. What's surprising is that once again, BMW is missing from the roster and surprisingly Toyota is absent. Porsche is missing but understandable since the EA exclusivity deal is still ongoing at this time, but Lamborghini also is missing. Oh yeah, Honda is missing too, I guess. And from what we have seen with the Ferrari California, along with the three starter cars, the cars once again receive a lot of love with amazing detailing. The developers got a direct hands on some cars too, which helps with their pursuit of interior accuracy. Even more so is the unique speedometer based on the brand or even car make. 
But anyways, you've picked the ride and now you get to witness another new mechanic, Brim, aka Free Ride Insta Money. It's a mechanic that allows players to earn money by performing tricks while driving in free roam. A fine system for making small changes of money, but not exactly a game changer. It does help improve on the cruising aspect, especially when done online with friends. And you do lose the accumulated money if you crash, so it's a pretty interesting game of risk and reward if you are into that kind of stuff too. Finally, we get to witness the interiors with the housing, and dear lord, did they improve on the housing. In TDU1, player housing is just a menu with the camera panning around the room. In TDU2, you have freedom to move all around the place with minimum restriction. As for the features in the housing, they're mostly similar to TDU1. You can change clothes, switch cars, and read the news here, but the extra addition is being able to invite friends over into your crib during online sessions. And these interiors can get pretty interesting with the amount of variety from different houses. Just look and compare our first house, which is just a small trailer park, to the penthouses, mansions, and apartments later on. But how do we even reach those luxurious penthouses? How do we even earn those sweet Bugattis and land some cash? Simply put, by winning championships and clearing events. Mostly the championships from the main campaign. During these championships, you are given a number of races, which you can do in any order you want as they are scattered throughout the map. With the regular races, time trials and speed trap races making a return, but there's a bit of a nasty surprise this time. Remember the no touching grass rule from TD1? Originally, that was reserved mostly for side quests. However, this time, they decided to put it into the main races as well, in the form of a time penalty. And for the side quests, you'll be doing them occasionally, but there are the mandatory hitchhikers with the driving school characters. Besides the licenses, there are global levels as well earned from a similar way to TDU1. The big difference is that now these requirements made more clear with the way achievements are shown by being separated into the different categories. Collection, basically how much cars and houses you've earned. Social, mostly covering the online multiplayer part of the game from the in-game friend system and clubs, which are essentially crews. Competition, race and challenge wins, including side quests, which are essentially car deliveries. A returning game mode from TDU1. Discovery mainly covers map exploration, how many roads have you discovered, how many stores and features have you found on the map. Luckily, exploring the great tropical islands of TDU is always a treat, especially now with the weather effect and day and night cycle. The immersion goes further up the scale. With both Ibiza, the new island of glamour and the return of Oahu, now with better graphics and reworked roads. There's a ton of places and buildings to discover. Each island is separated into different sections too, so you can focus on exploring specific parts of the island first. Speaking of which, the dealership has made a great return along with the other shops as well for player character and car customizations. Once again becoming the main motivation for players to discover the map at their own pace with hairdressers and plastic surgery shops for character customizations along with the clothing stores. Real estate agencies once again returning for player housing and finally car dealerships are once again split according to the car brands along with the tuning shops that have been simplified making things easier. Speaking of which, car tuning is another aspect that has been reworked for TDU2. In TDU1, car tuning is mainly based on preset packages for each car. In TDU2, tuning returns to a part-based upgrade system. However, what makes it interesting is how to earn the upgrade parts, which is via the discovery points in each area. The more you discover from the map, the more tuning upgrades are unlocked along with some other items from different stores. For visual upgrades, there's the sticker shots for decals, but the old color and interior color options are still there along with rims. So if you're into turning shitboxes into street monstrosities, I wouldn't count on this game to scratch that itch. I think it's time we talk about the handling. Ow. For starters, it's still a simcade similar to TDU1, however, there are some quirks that really deserve to be questioned, like for example, the gravity. Ah! Jesus, the penalty! I lost all of the points I gained! 
Every single point, man, just gone. It's like the planet has double the gravity strength than normal. And the cars can't be too twitchy and unstable, but that one can be an issue of preference. But at least it's still somewhat tolerable. One thing I can say is the massive positive here is the bikes, though. They are absolutely better to drive in TDU2. There is another thing I forgot to mention being the cops. TDU1 had them, but they were not really that well implemented. Well, what about now? The cops in this game have a much better mechanic for stars by using a trap traffic violation meter instead of instantly giving you a wanted state immediately from randomly crashing. You probably also notice the odd buildings during exploration as well. A lot of these buildings are just there for decoration, which is a shame because some of them legitimately look like something they were probably planning to use for some kind of feature. There is one that manages to make it into the final game however the car wash. Easily the best piece of content in this whole game. It's so great in fact that many players have gone into the car wash many times just for the satisfaction of having their dirty exhaust cleaned up. I have no idea how you look around your car. Well, our car is squeaky clean though. This is when gaming peak. Oh, we have another car wash, man. Even better. Can we go to a car wash with a bike? <laughs> you can. <laughs> Aw, oh, nothing happens, man. Let's take our mind out of the gutter for a bit for something you probably have been waiting for this entire time. The multiplayer. The bread and butter of TDU, the main reason why this game was extremely popular to begin with. As mentioned before, the official servers have been taken down since 2018. So in this video, I had the pleasure of using Project Paradise 2 to restore the online functions again. And boy does this game truly shine in the multiplayer department. So first off, the friend system is pretty basic, however with friends, we can basically invite each other into our own housing and just hang out, even doing so while cruising in the open world. Besides friends, there's the club feature. Joining one basically gives you the privilege of club races and four different cars depending on your club's level. Once you unlock them, you will have to purchase them so your club members can drive them for free. And then there's the race lobbies which can work as a car show lobby, with everyone's car being shown fully for everyone. If you see a very weird car though, don't be surprised, it's very likely that person is using a modded car. You can even get into other players cars and inspect or play around with the interiors. Can anyone tell me of any any current racing game that has this feature. I bet you can't. But what about the game modes? Well, there's the usual races from single player, but there are some additional game modes as well from the crew races and instant challenges, alongside the casino races. Speaking of which, it's probably time we talk about the casino, so kids, close your eyes and ears because we're going hard into this. The Casino Island, something completely new for TDU2. As the name suggests, it is an island separate from both Ibiza and Oahu with its own weird economy using casino points. On the island, we can basically run around the casino building enjoying some of the high-stakes game booths such as the roulette machines, poker tables, and the beverage solar crown raffles. Rewards from these activities are mostly stuff like cash, but then there's also emotes locked behind some of the slot machines. New poker emote unlock thumbs up. <laughs> Very much so, man. And the top prize of the whole island being a free Audi R8. You win a car out of this. Aw man, so close. Or you can purchase it for $1 million. Hearing that, you're most likely tempted to keep pulling the lever, but as someone who spent hours in the casino attempting to get the R8, I'm gonna instead tell you to play in moderation. Don't be like me. And that is Test Drive Unlimited 2, the sequel to The Great Innovator. Has this game achieved what the developers set out to do, and just like before, does it age well? Even though the game was met with some mixed reception, and Atari doing things they shouldn't have, I'd say it's aged quite well at least well enough thanks to the efforts of the fans with restoring its multiplayer functions. In terms of advancements, this game certainly didn't push the envelope as far as TD1 did, mostly improvements in a whole lot of areas. And while the story campaign is appreciated, along with the number of cutscenes in an attempt to make this world feel more alive, it does have the side effect of turning its progression into something far more linear than what was expected, which is going to irk some players and fans of TDU1. But in the end, I had fun with this game, especially because the only thing we got that's close to what TDU has to offer for nowadays is Forza Horizon. So it'd be great to see Test Drive Solar Crown actually turn out to be a great title that can challenge Forza's current dominance, but just like last time, we'll have to see when the game fully releases. 
Thank you for watching this video, I appreciate a lot. Big shoutouts goes to all the patrons and YouTube members now supporting the channel. I'll see you lads again next week with another video. Take care until then and have a wonderful day.